Hello again, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, and this is CSS Introduction. So this is the introduction to the cascading style sheet track. So we are going to be learning about styling your HTML documents using CSS. So CSS is a very nice, very neat tool that you will be using whenever you are creating websites, basically to make your websites prettier. What CSS does is it allows you to format your websites so that hopefully they look a lot nicer. Again, whenever we are talking about web programming, one of the problems that new people run into is they say, Eli, what single web programming language do I need to learn? They have this idea that you learn like one and that's it. Well, in the reality, when you're dealing with web programming, you're using many different languages. So you use HTML, hypertext markup language in order to write whatever web document that you're creating. You use something like PHP, Ruby on Rails, or Python in order to create dynamic websites to push and pull data from databases and documents. You use JavaScript in order to do things like animation and drop down menus. You use all of these different languages in order to create a single web page. Well, what CSS allows you to do is it allows you to do things such as format text, uh, use different fonts, create uh, shapes and colors and such on your web page. So this is what you are going to be using in order to format your web page, and that is all that CSS does. Now the nice part for you guys with CSS is that you don't need any special tools in order to code CSS, and you don't need any need to buy any kind of server services. So if you're going to be in, uh, programming in PHP or Ruby on Rails or Python or something like that, you have to go out and you have to actually set up a server or buy uh, a shared hosting plan in order to be able to use it. With CSS, this is just like HTML, all you need is your computer. You can code this in any kind of ASCII text editor, so I'm going to be showing you this today in Notepad++, but you can use just Notepad if you wanted to. And then what you can do is you can simply open up the files, the HTML files, using any kind of web browser. I'm going to be showing you this in Google Chrome, but you could use Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, uh, Opera, whatever you want. So the nice part with uh, learning CSS is you don't have to buy anything special. Now I do use the visual quick start guides as my study guide, as my work manual for whenever we do these programming tracks. I have found these to be the best and these are honestly my go-to uh, books whenever I'm trying to learn one of these languages. So they do have visual quick start guide CSS3. I would suggest that you go out and pick this up. Again, one of the problems with programming languages is that they are very, 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 very specific. You have to put the colon in the right place. You have to put the semicolon in the right place. You have to do everything absolutely specifically correctly. And the problem is with a lot of you guys trying to learn programming for free, for completely free is when you watch my videos, you understand 98% of what I'm doing, but many times you will miss just, just one or two little tiny stupid little things. And that's where books can be useful because with the book, you can actually sit here and read and see the code and make sure that you're really actually doing exactly what you, what you should be doing. Because most of the time, you think you copied exactly what I did, but oops, you forgot the semicolon or you forgot the colon or you forgot something little and that can cause you a lot of problems. So I would suggest you go out and pick up one of these books, again, with the visual quick start guide. Uh, this, this is $30 at Barnes & Noble, so you can get it, uh, I'm sure, a lot cheaper on Amazon.com. It is well worth your money if you are going to be learning CSS. So this is an introduction class. So I'm not going to go into depth on how to actually code in CSS. That will be more for other classes. This class, I just want you to start to understand what CSS is, why it's important, and get the idea of how it's used. So again, with CSS, what we are doing is we are formatting web pages. This means we are changing the color of text. This means we're, means we're changing the font of text, the size of text, that type of Thing, the alignment of text. The nice part with CSS is we can also create shapes 
uh, on our web pages. So if we want to create bars, if we want to create circles, if we want to create triangles, for any kind of formatting reasons, we can do that. We can make it so those shapes are visible, or we can also make it so those shapes are invisible, but then they format the text so that they fit into the shape. So when you want to do kind of like fancy things with text, you can do that with shapes. Now I'm going to be showing you the uh, the CSS code today. And the important thing to understand that there's, is that there's three ways to add CSS styles into your web page. So basically, again, we are, we are, we are modifying the, uh, the style of the text and the shapes and all that. So the first way that you can modify the style is actually in line. So we, what we do is we create an HTML document, you know, with the head and the body and all that, H1, H2, P tags and all that. Then what we do is by formatting the text in line, what that means is when we write out the H1 tag, we would then say H1 space style equals and then add the style. So the color, the size, the font, all of that kind of stuff. So we actually code every single tag. We would actually have to write out all of the, the CSS, the style information. Um, this is long and this is tedious and this is a horrible way to do things, but it is one way that you can style uh, web pages. It's possible. The the next way you can do it is you can actually set up the style for the entire page. So instead of going in and tag by tag defining what those tags look like, you can simply set up and say H1 for this entire page is this color, is italicized, blah, blah, blah. H2 is this color, is, it, is bolded, blah, blah, blah. So basically you can go in and you can assign the styles for the entire page. So all you have to do is you have to just have to do uh, H1, type in whatever text you want, close H1. H2, type in whatever text you want, close H2. You don't have to write all the information every time you create a tag. Now the way that most people use CSS is by using an external style sheet. Basically what this means is, is you create one style sheet generally for your entire website. So every web page on your website links back to that single style sheet. And so all you have to do is you have to type out the information in that one style sheet, and then when you use H1 anywhere in your entire website, it will relate, relate back to what you put into that style sheet um, so that you don't have to type it out for every line or on every page. So with that, let's go over to the computer so I can show you exactly how this works, give you a basic idea of what's going on. Because again, as with all this stuff, once you start to understand what's going on, I think it gets a lot, a uh, lot simpler. So this is the, the first example uh, that I'm going to show you, um, and we're going to come back to this to show you how it was created later. But I just want to give you a little bit of an idea, again, of what CSS is doing. So this is, uh, this is a web page that I created, and all of this formatting is done with CSS. So we have this H1, this text in H1, and as we can see, I think this is brown or something, and it's italicized. So I defined this in the CSS. So H2 is orange. I defined that in CSS. Uh, this, the P tag, this is purple and it's centered. And that was defined in CSS. Now the cool thing with CSS, a lot of people don't really realize uh, at first, or a lot of new people, is that you can do shapes and colors. So I created this box in CSS and then put the text inside of it. So this was done in CSS. The triangle, was done because of CSS. And then this, this right here is actually a triangle in a box. So I created a, a box and then I put the triangle over it. So these are the types of things you can do in CSS. Obviously you can do much more complicated, much prettier, cooler things. But again, I always try to show you kind of the simple stuff uh, so so that you, you don't get, get overloaded. No, so all of this, whenever I created anything, Again, as I've said, all of this has been created in, in Notepad++, so any kind of ASCII text editor. Now, the first example that I want to show you is inline styling. So this is where you actually write out everything every time you create a tag. So here you can see I do H1, and then I say style equals blue. So basically this H1, this text is going to be H1 and will be blue. 
I say this is blue and I close the tag. Then I call H1 again, but then I say I want this to be style red and I want this to be italicized. And then I do this is red. So basically, this is what I mean by inline. So you are actually writing this out every time that you create a tag. Now what this means is if I go over to this particular web page, this is what we are going to get. So this is the the uh, the uh, the notes at the top. This is an example using CSS in line. And then we can see this is blue. So as I, as I showed you, see that style color blue. So this is blue and this is red, style color red, font italicized. So this is what it looks like when we put everything in line. Now again, that is a way to do things, but that is, that is a bit of an obnoxious way of doing it. So the next thing that we can do is we can set the styles for the entire page. So instead of having to type out everything for every tag, we can set the style once and then use it throughout the page. So that's what I did on this web page. So this is just styles.html. And what I did is I said style, type equals text CSS media all. We'll talk about this in other classes. And then here I'm defining H1 and H2. So I say H1 is the color red. And then I say H2 is the color blue font style italic. And then I close the style. Now you'll notice down here when I use the H1 and H2 tags, now there's no more information. I simply use H1 and H2. It's not H1 style equals blah, blah, blah. It's simply H1 and H2. If we go over and we see the example of this, we're just going to go over to this web page and we can see that this is what shows up. So this is H1. So the H1 is red, is only red. And then this is H2, it's blue and italicized. And then just to show you, I can reuse the H1 without doing any kind of extra editing. Again, this is H1. So as I said here, basically for the single page, what we do is we set the style at the top. And then once we set the style at the top, then we can just do the H1, the H2, and the H1, whatever tags as we want, and we don't have to type extra information. So this is one way. This is a little bit easier uh, than doing in line. But really, the way that CSS is normally done is it's normally done using something called an external style sheet, as in we create a cascading style sheet that defines all of this stuff, and then we link to it. So this right here, this page that we are looking at is the actual HTML document. And then it links, see link ref equals CSS test.cs. So it links to this external CSS, the cascading style sheet. So here we link to it and then we type everything out, H1, H2, P. Then we do a division ID. So this is a shape. Then we do the division ID, this is the triangle. Then we do a division ID, and this is a triangle within a square. Basically then, all of that formatting is defined within this cascading style sheet. So H1, color brown, font italicized. H2, color orange. P, color purple, text align, center. Then we define what is a square with 120 pixels, height at 120 pixels, background red. Then we define what a, what a triangle is. So all of this stuff is defined within this style sheet. And then the style sheet is linked to within the HTML page. And then you just go and you type all your information. What that then looks like with the, the final example is what we looked at originally. So we have H, this is H1, this is H2, this is P, this is a box with text in it. This is a green triangle. This is a triangle over a square. So all of the formatting was set up in this cascading style sheet. And then we just go through and we type out the document. So this is that square with the text. So we create a division with the idea of square. And then we write out the text. Then here we're just calling the triangle. And then we're putting the triangle here inside the square. Again, a lot of this stuff, if you're really, 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 really new and you're like, duh, I don't get it, Eli. Um, that's okay. That is okay. We, we're going to be teaching. I will teach you this later. But right now, I just want you to get the concept. So you can either do it in line, you can do set the style for the entire page, or you can use an external style sheet.
for uh, for doing this stuff. So that's really all there is, uh, at least for an introduction to cascading style sheet. It's 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 pretty simple. It's pretty easy. Again, the biggest thing with being a new person uh, and going out and starting to program, the biggest the biggest reason people have problems is that they don't pre-plan enough. With CSS, with any programming language, is if you really figure out what you need to do, it becomes much easier to figure out how to code what it is you want to do. A lot of people, they have like this vague idea of what they kind of sort of want, and then they sit down to code, and it just becomes a horrendous, horrible, nasty mess because they're trying to figure out what they want at the exact same that they're, same time that they're trying to code. It's just a bad way of doing things. So with CSS, with HTML, with PHP, with Python, with all of that stuff, if you sit down and figure out what you're trying to do first, then it is much easier to go and research and figure out how it is you do whatever it is you are trying to do. But with CSS, what we are doing with CSS is we are formatting the web pages. So again, we are changing the fonts, we are creating the shapes, we're dealing with colors, we're dealing a little bit with pictures. That is the kind of stuff we are doing and that is what we will be discussing in the rest of this track. So as I said, the big thing, go out, and pick up, if not a visual quick start guide, go out and pick up a book, but I would suggest you go out and pick up the visual quick start guide. If you're gonna be learning this stuff, 30 bucks is really, really, really inexpensive uh, to make sure you do uh, what it is you need to do. Again, CSS uh, is very specific, like all programming languages, you have to put the colon in the right place. You have to put the semicolon in the right place. You have to code it, The use this proper syntax or it simply will not work at all or it'll create a nasty, nasty mess. That's why books are good to make sure that, that you're doing exactly what it is that you think you should be doing. So as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. This class was CSS, Cascading Style Sheet Introduction. This is the first class in the CSS track. As always, I enjoy teaching this and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.